Philippines, such a passionate area for boxing. Of course, the home of Manny Pacquiao. And uh, their eyes tonight on this one is Nicholas Walters on his way in 24 0, 20 knockouts from Jamaica. First featherweight champion ever from Jamaica. The pro since 2008. He won the WBA featherweight title in 2012 with a seventh round TKO over Prescott, Jamaica. He had three knockdowns in that fight. Two defenses, including a five-round KO over Victor Chinian in Macau in his last fight. So Walters comes in here with a lot of momentum. Well, he can't. I mean, Walters is the new era of what boxing is. And um, undefeated fellow from Jamaica. The likes of like Simon Brown, the likes of like Mike McCullum. And other great champions that came out of Jamaica. Um, he looks to take over the featherweight division. Um, Donito Tanea looks to stop that and become the newest hot button in the featherweight division. That's my whole stomping grounds. Uh, it is. It's a great division. Uh, featherweights like Salvador Sanchez, uh, uh, Jeff Fennick. Um, you got some great featherweights out there that, that made pivotal moves in the sport and change the demographic and he's looking to do that right now and especially attributed Jamaica to and I like Jamaican beef patties by the way all right so I do like Jamaican beef patties and carry punch as they call it well here's a sentimental favorite as you can tell from the noise Nito Denaro from the Philippines 33 to 21 knockouts a pro since 2001 won the WBC Bantamweight title with a win over Fernando Montiel in 2011. That was a TKO2. He won the WBO 122-pound championship over Wilfredo Vasquez in 2012. And he won the WBA 126-pound championship in his last fight, which was stopped because of a head bump, but he was ahead of the card, so it's always good to get ahead early. A technical draw five over Sipiwi Benyetka. A clash of heads went to the scorecards, and he won. The guy that lost his second pro fight in 2001 and did not lose again until 2013. And that was Guillermo Rigondeau. Michael Buffer will... Get us started. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to StubHub Center here in Carson, California, USA, and an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. And it's all brought to you by K2 Promotions and sponsored by Expo 2017 and trackimo.com. All about sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. This next contest, sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, and promoted by Top Rank Incorporated in association with Warriors Boxing Promotions. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest, Adelaide Bird, Steve Morrow, and Tom Taylor. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Raul Caiz Jr. And now, it's time for our co-feature. It's champion versus champion, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Super World Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, official weight, 125, one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 24 fights, 24 victories, including 20 wins by knockout from Montego Bay, Jamaica. He's the undefeated WBA featherweight world champion, the Jamaican KO King, Nicholas Axman Waters. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, and officially weighing in at 125, one half pounds also. His professional record, also outstanding. 33 victories, including 21 knockouts, only two defeats. He's a five-time 
five division world champion. Fighting out of Bohol, Philippines, the former flyweight, super flyweight, bantamweight, super bantamweight world champion, and now the reigning and defending WBA super world featherweight champion, the Filipino Flash, Nonito Doni. Fighter Chief, second only, please. Fighter Chief, second only. Let me fix your trunks here. No, no, leave them up there for right now. I'm going to give you the mark. Mouthpiece? Mouthpiece? Come closer. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Legal punches here on up. These are a bit high. Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. All right, the summit at 126 pounds. They can take attendance for the key players in this division because Johnny Gonzalez is here, Vasil Lomachenko is here. So the major champions at 126 pounds, some are fighting, some are watching. Ready? Excitement Ready. to the air. Let me say it again. Box. All right. Leaning in. I think he wanted to pop the jab. Came up a little bit short. Walters has a reach advantage. And we're going to see if he's able to use it in this fight. Left up to the body here by. Walters. We're going to see that if Walters wants to exchange with Donaire. I saw Donaire once or twice in the gym, and he has a extreme punching power for a man of his size. So I was pretty amazed how hard he hits at his weight class. And now he's up to featherweight. And now I spawned him, he was 115 pounds. And he surprised me. So. Let's see if he can do the same to Walters. How far back did you spawn him? I spawned him. I was still boxing. I believe him. It had to be somewhere around feet, guys. 2008 or 7. All right, that's Kevin Kelly, two-time featherweight champion. So Good nice, job. you got to say it twice. And that's because you had to do it twice. Yeah, I had to. As you mentioned earlier, and I agree, a real nice division through the years for boxing. Big right hand by Walters and the No knockout, no knockout. I think he touched tripped. the canvas. It looked like a trip. I don't think Walters landed. It was a slip. I would like to definitely see the instant replay. I don't think Walters landed. It didn't see a shot. No, we didn't get a count, so that the, the slip has been ruled. Yeah, I, I think he slipped. Uh, it looked like it's beating. Got fixed up. Let's see if Walters takes anything from that. It's an intense fight right now. Uh, both men filling each other out. Nico trying to find out where he belongs. Um, Walters, Walters just trying to take the initiative of the first round and get it in the bank. Good right hand there by Walter. And then a good counter left hook by Donaire. Yeah, what Donaire wants to do is match punching power with you. That's how he pretty much fights. See what you have to offer and then see if you can take his shots. That was pretty much his philosophy. Ten seconds. All right, so interesting Ten outline of this fight early <laughs> as Walters losing the reach. And Donaire countering with some big shots. Make sure you move side to side. Don't stand that rope, okay? Bust it in back. Okay, keep moving side to side. That's all you need. Okay, don't get hit with those jabs, don't get touched with those, those jabs, okay? Just move quick, move your head quick, then do some counter-punching. 
Okay, work. Your body shots was good, but you didn't land it good. Okay? Let's take a better look at the so-called knockdown or of balance punch. As you can see, he's slipping. Nothing lands officially. He falls off balance and he falls down. So it wasn't a knockdown for any punch, as you can see right there. Pretty much his footing got, his right foot got behind his left foot and he went down. The key hold on, determination hold on, hold on, hold on. referee makes there is whether that left hand actually scored or not. Because even if you've got your feet tied up, you're touched on a punch. Even if it's Watch a light foot. one and you go down, it will be scored a knockdown. Yes, but there was no contact, so it can't be scored as a knockdown, and that's why the official said no knockdown. We looked at it. That was the key determinant was that left hand. because It, it actually made contact, but with gloves, and so it came up just short. So a near knockdown for Walters. And in round two, right back to the attack. I asked Nito when I saw him in the lobby um, yesterday, does he got anything? Foot left hook by Donaire as Walters comes in and invites trouble. Yeah, well, that punch, that body shot that he's throwing is money in the bank. And I asked Donito what he'd do different for this fight. He said he went to camp for the first time. Left his wife and kids at home and went to camp. So he's dedicated to serious. Good right hand by Donaire. Yeah, that's a big sacrifice to, to leave the family, get into a zone, totally isolate yourself. We've seen guys that do that, especially the first time. We've seen the condition. It's psychological. Very good. It's more psychological because um, I went to camp maybe twice in my career. A lot of fighters I fought with the camp, and I did. And I still won because it's all about dedication and how motivated you are. So they're starting to lay low throw bombs. And the question mark was if Walters takes his bombs, uh, it could be a very interesting fight. If Walters can take his bombs, the feeling is that Walters will beat him. But that test is going to occur. Well, it's already happened. Donito landed some shots that were pretty hard. Oh, pretty bring, it up, baby. bring it up, bring it up. low blow. Pretty low. It was accidental. It was accidental. Okay, boom, boom, baby. Está bien, así está tiempo. Está bien. Here we go. Tuck gloves, guys. Head accidental. Head accidental. Head accidental. Here we go. Está bien. Okay. There's a good one. The referee controlling the tap as you go back to the Mayweather Victor Ortiz days. He left to the fighters so uh, somebody can make a, a head up play. In this case, the referee said, Both of you tap it, my supervision. Nito throwing some pretty hard, hard bombs in this fight. Um, I think he's got cut. Like the I think on his right eye, he's left, right eye, he's cut. He got a nick on the outside. And they continue to open up in a great. Matchup and Walters is hurt, but the bell jumps in. Divine intervention. Like I said, the key is for Walters not to get to exchanges with Nonito because Nonito has heavy, heavy hands. And the key to this fight is to keep Walters outside boxing, but the key for Nonito is to keep Walter exchanging. So it depends on who gets the better of the combination. So Donaire. Both you guys keep those punches up, okay? With fireworks. Now Walters can't afford to get careless. Here we, here we take a look at the low blow, right under the borderline, right there. You see, Benito landed the shot effectively, but and see the reaction. From Walters. Go, seconds out, my piece in. My piece. My piece. Step back. You always have to look on, at the. Uh, Let's the go, guys. got to be quicker. Let's go. That perceives that, Box. too. Into round three we go. And it has been an explosive beginning between Nicholas Walters and Nito Denaire. And I've seen a little tiny nick on the corner, right eye of the Nito Denaire that happened in the last round. With right hand by Donaire over the jab hand that had not been brought back by Walter. 
Bonaire trying to tee off. Walters got rocked at the end of the last round, and it looks like he still hasn't come all the way back from that. Yeah, sometimes you don't come back from that, but sometimes what happens when you fight a puncher like Manito, a fighter gets acclimated to your punching power, and that could be a threat, too. Well, the Nonito chant coming up from this crowd. It, it is his crowd. Well, look at the cabeza. Stop, no, no punch, no punch. I'm here, let him go. Turn around, here we go. Box. Walter's trying to do something behind the jab. Reach advantage not working for him yet. And they're just missed. Yeah. He had that one targeted for the KO zone. Yeah, the Filipino Fido, Fido Flash is hoping to land the punch and make a crash. That's what's going no, on right that was here. Legal. That was right. No. Everything from Denair is heavy-handed and has the potential to be fight-changing. Yeah, it's heavy-handed, it's quick, it's fast. It's, it, you know, he is the Filipino Flash. It comes fast and it comes hard. So the key for him, now Walters, what I don't see is a jab that's going to offset the tempo that Anito's trying to set. Well, thank you. You have to get that jab out there and double it. But if you've been hit with some big shots, we've seen guys get tentative with their jab. They don't trust it. Yeah, well, you gotta, well you're only tentative in it with, with it if you're not throwing it correctly and not landing correctly. If you're throwing a hard jab, it keeps Anito at bay. But he's not doing this. There you go, good combo. And he's running for exchanges, which he can't afford to do. Big shot by Walters gets the knockdown. Will he get a four down? Five. That was six, an uppercut. He hit seven, Nonito with an uppercut. So eight, okay, Nonito now hands went up. down with a flash knockdown. So Box. now Nonito gonna ask some questions. Is it good for him to be in the exchanges? Ten seconds. First seven, knockdown ten of Bonaire's career. And it was explosive. As this fight has been explosive. An absolute treat. Oh, now they now the fight breaking out. What we expected is what we are seeing. And this has been terrific. John, I told you watch Africa, okay? Just move, don't get too close to much, John. Get to range. You're too close to much. Range the more. Okay, how you been doing that? How you feel? Don't get too close, eh? Karol, yeah, yeah. I know you're gonna come in, okay? Okay? okay Bye-bye. Here we take a look at the knockdown. Underneath, right on the button, and Nito goes down. Nito just, goes down. So, just when everything was going well go, for him. Here we take another goes. look Mark right on the side of the face, and Nito didn't see it coming, and he goes down. He didn't see it coming. Get back over, get back over. Get back over. Tremendous up. Here we go. Nito, box. Now we start round four, and this explosive thriller. Nicholas Walters and Nonito Denaire fight for 126 pounds supremacy. I think now Nonito, from getting dropped for the first time in his life, realizes that he can be hurt with a shot now. And that might change the, the landscaping of this fight. Yeah, you get dropped and overpowered, and it's easy to think, hey, I can't afford to make a mistake. Whatever I do, I better be perfect. And it might shrink some of your offense out of self-preservation. Yeah, well, what's going to happen now is Nito realized he went down for the first time. And now he, he might realize that he can be knocked out. So, and now he's going to be very careful with his exchanges compared to being a little reckless like he was in the beginning. At least over the next couple of rounds, you would assume. And then you wonder, well, does the confidence come back to him if he weathers the storm? Well, and it may not be in him at all to be cautious. Well, Anito can box. I had, like I said, I've been in the ring with the man myself. He has a very good jab on side-to-side -side movement, and I'm expecting to him for him to demonstrate that for the next one or two rounds. Walter's trying to follow up on what he did so well at the end of round three. 
He had near knockdowns in one and two. An absolute knockdown in round three. Walter's throwing a very effective jab over the tops and hit Benito with it twice. Um, no, no right hand. He's being very cautious with throwing straight rights, and he's working that cut that Benito has. And that's what he's trying to do. And Walters is taking what's being offered because look, the first thing you want to do is you want to get back to the uppercut. You just dropped him with it, but he's not chasing it. Yeah, well, he's being very smart. With Benito, you can't get killed. He can punch. And when a guy can punch like that and he get desperate, he has a cut on his eye, he becomes more dangerous. And like I said, back in the cat to a corner, as they say. And they're just missed with a right hand. And Walters gets his in. And there's the jab showing some of his reach advantage. Good body shot by Walters, even though he got warned. The out of exchange is Walters landing clean up better shots. And Nito is um, being every apprehensive in these seconds. fights. Stop at the bell, gentlemen. Ten seconds. As well. And Walters is working on that effectively. Listen for that bell. Done! This way, this way. Triple G. Up next, Gennady Golovkin and Marco Antonio Rubio. Speaking of explosive, that man sold a lot of tickets here as soon as they, they went on sale. Triple G, 30 and 0, 27 knockouts. On the hot streak of a lifetime. And Marco Antonio Rubio. 59 wins. Lost his title on the scales yesterday. But still has the payday and the big fight in front of him. He was a uh, almost two pounds overweight and then unable to lose it. Box. We go into round five. Nicholas Walters and Nonito Denaire. Locked up in a terrific battle. Dave Fontempo and Kevin Kelly with you from the Stub Hub in Carson, California. That cut seems to have the Nito's attention. Uh, I see him rubbing it, wiping it. Um, you know, that in the back of your head as a fighter, when you get cut, and some fighters it bothers, some fighters it doesn't. It's a hindrance to the Nito now, and he's very cautious of it. And instead of saying, you know what, forget the cut, I'm trying to get the win, that's where his mindset needs to be. Not worried about that guy. So that's an extra level of toughness you have to travel to get to that point. Yeah, well, you, you train through that. I remember years ago, trainers used to take a bag of water, tape it to a fighter's head, punch a, a hole in it with a pin, so the fighters got used to something dripping on them just in case they got a cut. It's all pre it's true, preparation, because like my trainer, Phil Borgia, trained me to fight with one hand in case I ever broke my hand. And that's exactly what happened. When I broke my hand, I was able to perform. Benito, the cut is on his mind, and uh, this is what champions do. They overcome adversity. I saw you do it a few times in your career with uh, pumping and everything like that. You found an extra gear as Denaire Watch your head, guys. is Watch trying your head. to work on the inside, and Walters tried to get that uppercut home again, and then pushing off, looking for positioning, and then Denaire scores with a hook, and another hook by Denaire, and a good one by Walters. Oh, they're both exchanging right now. And let me tell you something. Th this division for, for the nail, these guys are stronger and they're bigger. And so they hit as hard as he does at times. And now he's starting to see that the featherweight division, the featherweights, have a great deal of punching power. It's a good exchange in the last minute of this round. Walters gets his jab out first. <laughs> Chopping right hand. Denaire lunging with his, trying to set up one big one. That's the thing we're seeing from both of these guys. They both have one punch, fight changing power. Yeah, and I tell you one thing, right now who's getting the worst of it is Nonito. 
as this war is waged, Walters right now has the slight advantage because he has the cut. Denaire firing from the side. A lot of opening up the middle for Walters. Good hard left hook to the body by Donaire. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. These guys get everything into these power shots. Still gave Walters that round, but the last, I say, the 10 seconds, and Lito looks very good. Chris Algieri, who found lightning in a bottle this year with that win over Ruslan Provodnikov in New York, now will fight Manny Pacquiao next month. And this guy can be the story of the year in boxing. Right place, right time, and get on a roll, which is what he has done this year. Very likable guy. And he takes on Pac-Man. Let's go. Sixth round action. Nicholas Walters, 24-0, 20 knockouts. Donito Denaire, 33 and 2 with 21 knockouts. Left eye accidental Denaire headbutt. was down in round three. It has been a war. Both guys uh, laying claim to the WBA 126 pound title. Set up and down, trying to find some positioning. The score with the jab. Walters working on that cut. By the way, we did hear the word accidental headbutt used by the referee before this round. Didn't specify which cut he was referring to, but you keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah, but Nito. Benito's face is starting to break down, as you can see. Um, as a fighter ages, scar tissue it tends to be swell up twice as fast. I noticed that later on in my career, um, that the bruising accelerates. The swelling accelerates. Um, it seems that way on Benito now, as his face, just from the jab, is starting to break down. And that could cause desperation. Double left hook to the body, and there's a right hand by Walters. They're good at Denaire backpedaling. Walters sensing opportunity. They're going to cut that's leaking on the side of his face as Alito tries to exchange. Uh, and he leaves himself open after he misses, and Walters is right on him. Walters is sharp shooting right now. He's able to see what Donaire is doing better. And he's able to adjust. Let me, here we go. Box. Yeah, Donito's into a fight right now, and Donito uh, still can punch. He's still dangerous. So Walters can't take up a grant, but he's going to keep applying the pressure to Donito to take away his punching power, which is very smart. It's an interesting puzzle for Walters because, yes, you have to be careful, but you do have to gamble a little bit because you've got some momentum and you could really parlay it into something big. But well, he's breaking Nolito down That's with those shots. There you go. And Nolito's face is starting to fall apart. And um, he put the right Ten seconds. Work. Stop at the bell, gentlemen. Ten seconds. The right hand by Walters. Walters does it. Denaire wanted to will himself up. 
and just could not get there. And what a moment for Nicholas Walters. by Denair. Opening up his wife Rachel Donaire. Sad moment for her. You always feel for the family members at ringside what they have to be uh, going through. He went to camp, he did everything he could to prepare for this fight. Um, he went to camp for the first time, he did a lot. As you can see, here he runs into shots recklessly, and Walter sees behind the head, knocks his equilibrium off. That's a bad shot in a bad spot, which most fighters can't recover from. And as you can see, in the exchanges, as though Lonito fell victim to that, hand, that shot right here behind the head, which took him out the game, which jars the brain, shakes your brain up, puts you in a comatose state, and you see Nanito right here, gets hit with the shot, doesn't even see it, goes down, the fall as well hurts him, and Nanito can't get up. He almost did, he tried, but the equilibrium shot, forget about it, and this man gets the most significant victory in his life in the most emphatic way possible. He With just big yeah. shot. He just Thank solidified. He's the oh, king of the featherweights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. you I know you his reaction guy. time was <laughs> great shape. <laughs> Michael Buck. Hey, that's why I said I respect you. I respect you as a person, and I respect you as a fighter. Fifty-nine seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory. His record now goes to 25 and 0, 21 KOs, and he is the super world champion of the WBA. The KO King from Jamaica, Nicholas Axman. You talk about a guy peaking at the right time. That is he. Nicholas Walters, 28 years old. And he is on top of the game in this division right now. The king has arrived. Well, you know, we're talking about this is what boxing needs, the knockout artists. That's what's just missing. That, you know, with the Floyd arrow that we were in, Mayweather's fights mostly go to distance. The boxing fans are tired of seeing 12 rounds, um, knowing that the outcome's going to be the same pretty much. It's like watching a movie. If you've seen it before, you know the outcome. People want it, the, um, what makes boxing so special is that it's unpredictable. Anybody could win. There could be a knockout, could be a knockdown. You know, it's like watching a drama. And that's why the Galapagos era, now the Walters era, just like you, the other champions in the division are out there now knocking people out. That's what people, Pax Arenas, that's what people want to see. That's what I want to see. And that's what Dave Von Temple wants to see the pro level has ever done before you dominated knocked down and eventually knocked out no needle donaire how did you do it well actually i work hard in first let's say him thanks to my, my team of people thanks to the wba for giving me this opportunity thanks to mr babam for his promotion warriors promotion also thank you i must say thanks to my manager and thanks to the public in general for supporting the action but it was a it, it, this victory didn't just came like that him you know we work hard for this victory. I mean, knowing that we're fighting Donaire, it's always going to be a tough work because he's a super, super great boxer. He's a super world champion. I mean, category after category has won titles. So I know I had to respect him. I have to put a lot in his training. And that's what I did. I came out. He caught me a few shots in the early round also because he had power and he had speed. He was good. He was great to fight. Well, I enjoyed the fight. I enjoyed the fight and I thank him also, thank Donier also for giving me this opportunity of fighting one of the best and giving me the opportunity so I can display my talent and HB onto the world.
It was a magnificent performance, partly because you dominated pretty much the entire fight, but also because when you decided to trade with him towards the end of the second round, he hit you with that hook that is in the past always turned around fights for him, usually knocked the guy down or out, sometimes broken something when he lands that hook. He seemed to hurt you, and yet you managed to recover in time to go out and pick up where you left off in the third round. Take me through that moment when he hit you with that hook. You know what? I got, I got a little bit confident. I realized, I said, you know what? I'm gonna overpower him. So I went a little bit too confident. And he caught me with a good shot, boom. When he caught me, he caught me pretty good. And the bell, he, the bell rang and I went to my corner. When I went to my corner, my coach, they were like excited. I said, no, no, calm down. I recuperated from the shot just by walking over the corner. I recuperated from the shot, but it was a very good shot. He caught me very, very clean, very good shot. And he have, very, he have, he have good power also. So, you know, but I recuperated after that shot and I came out, I knew that I have a job to do. And I just went out there and get the job done. It's your father's 55th birthday today. Would you like to, as a birthday present, see the end of this fight? You want to go through this end of this fight? Here's the knockout. <laughs> Let's get a look at it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Take us through it, Nicholas. Not, not Toby. What's your shot? <laughs> what do you see? Yeah, you know what? I, if, you, if you take a look at it, I invited him, I invited him into me. It's like fishing, you give him the bait and he, 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 he came. If you see, he launches a shot and I get away from the shot and then I counter him. But I take nothing away from Donito. He's a great champion, wonderful person. I can give it to, that to him. He's a wonderful person. And you know, if sometime I'm supposed to fight someone and I need some speed, I definitely look up for Donito to help me, help me in a training camp or whatever, because he's a great, great fighter. Gracious in victory. Good to have you as a new featherweight star in boxing. Thanks, Nicholas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, come on, man. You're one of my favorite fighters, man. Hey, come on, man. You're my favorite fighter now. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, man. You're amazing. A champ to a champ, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And if You're I can amazing. help you sometime hey. in training or you. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you. I respect thank you. you so much. No needo. What happened tonight? Um, let me see. First of all, I want to thank um, Nicholas for just an amazing fighter, amazing person. The people out here, I'm sorry I fell short to my uh, goal, but I want to thank you guys for coming out here. I still love you guys. Hopefully you guys still love me. Thank you guys so much. How much of tonight, because you've been very dominant until the last year or so, and there was a lot going on in your life, you were annihilating top opposition. How much of tonight was how good your opponent is? How much of it is now competing at a heavier weight class at an older age? He knocked the f sh out of me. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, um, he's an amazing fighter, amazing champion, man. I just put my hats off of him. You know, he's an amazing guy. But, uh, you know, I thought that I'll, I'll be good in this weight class, you know, as I'm getting older. But I'm not going to take anything from Walters. I was at my best. I've never trained this hard. I've never, ever, ever trained this hard. I mean, I was away from my family. I knew exactly what kind of punch uh, power and, and the person that he is inside that ring and he was he, he came out as, as as tough as I thought he would be and, and you know just the size the, the size that he have over me I couldn't move he was just amazing he over, overwhelmed me and knocked the shit out of me no Nito I hate to ask at a time like this but I have to given the fact that you trained as hard as you did you seem to get that eye of the tiger back and seem to be totally ready what is losing and you've never in that condition ever lost to a fighter usually you dominate them what does this mean for your career? I gotta go back into uh, to the drawing board, you know. I know that I can't compete with guys like Walters. I mean, he's just amazing, overwhelming, powerful guy, and he was just overwhelming inside that ring. No matter what I did, movements and anything, he just, he, I just succumbed to his size, his power, and just his overwhelming aura inside that ring. Does that mean you want to move back down or that you're done? Um, we're, we're looking at it, you know. I, I came out here with my, with my wife. We'll, we'll, we'll decide, you know. I mean, I came out here with a great champion. I never back down from any fight, and you saw it here. Uh, you know, I could have said, you know what, I got the WBA. I don't need to fight the guy who has the WBA, but I came in here because I know that Walter is an amazing fighter, and he's worthy of that challenge, and I came in here, and he beat the shit out of me. Thanks, No Nito. Appreciate you talking to us, especially now. The king is dead. Long live the king. All right, so uh, a high level of sportsmanship, to say the least, between these two fighters. Yes, I mean, you you have to admit when you've been beaten. Um, I give Nito credit. I give him great wisdom. I mean, he knocked out guys the way he was thought today. So 
and he recognizes a new talent. He recognizes that, and he said it, he was too big, okay, he was too strong, everything he had was, I mean, he took the shot that Walters got hit with would knock out an average 115, 119 pounder. It didn't knock out Walters, which shows, like I said, when a guy's smaller and he moves up, his powers come with diminishes a little bit. So what happens, the same thing he had at a lower weight, he don't have at the higher weight. So I think he realized his limitations. And that's what's good about Nonito. He realized I'm not a featherweight, I'm a junior featherweight at best. Do you see him fighting again down to the lower level? Man, we talked about the family angle, away from his family. Last couple fights, not been as dominant as some other fight. I, I'm sure he's gotta be weighing both sides of this equation. I say for Nonito, almost like what happened to Gamboa when he went up to lightweight, um, I would go bring him back down to 122 and he could dominate that division and leave the featherweights alone. He reached his maximum today of what he could do. As you see, the same punches that land on a junior featherweight or a bantamweight didn't have the same effect on Walters as they did on past opponents. So the hint of retirement in the post-fight interview, you would say no to that, go down to 122 and fight there. People always try to retire you. You know what I'm saying? You have a bad fight, you had a good fight, I've experienced it in my career. I boxed 18 years professional. And I'm gonna tell you something. When I lost my first fight, I was 41 and 0. I was undefeated for 41 fights. And Merchant had the audacity in the ring to tell me, is it over? I lost one fight. So, I mean, before that I was dominant. So it's people that throw a tie on you quick. They say, you know what? They don't want to give Walter.